first sold in 1958, the Chevrolet Impala nameplate's been in the stable for 55 years. In that time, we've seen the car go from a decorative, tail fin wearing work of art all the way to being a taxi cab and a cop car. Now, there's nothing wrong with taking a taxi to the airport and certainly nothing wrong with avoiding a DUI after a long night at the bar, but I personally wouldn't want to put down my cold hard cash to have one as a daily driver. I'm not alone and Chevrolet knows that. That's why the car sitting behind me, the 2014 Chevrolet Impala, has almost nothing in common with its predecessors, and thank God for that. Once it's fully rolled out, the Impala will come with a total of three engine options. That'll be a 2.5 liter four cylinder as the base, a 2.4 liter four cylinder with GM's E Assist, that's a mild hybrid system, and this car that we have to test today. That's the 3.6 liter V6. That car will come out first before the two four cylinders and offers 305 horsepower and 264 foot pounds of torque. From the V6, you can expect 19 miles per gallon driving around town and 29 miles per gallon on the highway. That's according to the EPA. Pricing for that V6 opens at 30,760, including delivery. That'll climb all the way up to 42,790 for the V6 LTZ if you choose to check every option box. No transmission options here though, Chevrolet limits to a six-speed automatic only. Some of the cars the Impala competes directly with include the Toyota Avalon, the Dodge Charger, and the Ford Taurus. Mechanics aside, most people would probably agree that the ninth generation Impala simply didn't compete on a stylistic level. That's all different now, thankfully though, with this car that looks nothing like the old one. That's due in part to the fact that it has a front end that seems to be influenced a little bit by the Camaro. Aside from that, it has that low brow, strong crease lines on the hood, and a long sloping roof line that help hide the fact that this is actually a slightly longer car than the previous generation. Moving around to the back, the rear end is just as stylish as the front. You get these wide hips that also have those crease lines, and on the nicer trimmed cars, you also get integrated exhaust pipes in the rear bumper. Aside from that, the rear deck lid is deceptively short for what's actually a very large trunk. This car comes with standard 19-inch wheels, although the base car comes with 18s, and the one that we have right now actually is equipped with 20-inch wheels. Just like the outside, Chevrolet has done a good job of delivering a handsome package with the Impala's interior. One of the first standout items is this accent panel that divides the front seats visually and gives you this dual cabin feeling. Aside from that, everything's very simple and easy to use and surprisingly premium feeling and also especially ergonomic. All of the usual suspects are available with plenty of storage both down there and under the center console, but my favorite feature is how this screen actually pops up to show you a secret compartment with a USB cable that will allow you to plug in your iPod, your iPhone, or whatever you'd like to use to listen to music. One of the other key features that's especially important for a car like this that people will no doubt appreciate is the fact that there's a three-prong outlet poking into the back seat. Finally, other features like dual zone climate control and a heated steering wheel are going to mean that the Impala can be comfortable in any climate. Not only that, but both the front and the rear seats get more space than the previous generation. Like I said before, when this car first goes on sale in a few months time, it's only going to be available with the 3.6 liter V6. That's not a bad thing, in fact, Chevrolet expects the majority of customers to go for the LT trim with the V6 engine. Now, one of the things you're probably wondering about is, how does a front-wheel drive car that weighs 3,800 pounds roughly for the curb weight handle in the corners? Well, surprisingly well, actually. Uh, other cars similar to this that it would compete with sort of feel like you're pushing something like maybe a sled through snow when you're turning, and the Impala actually is fairly well poised. Then again, this is a full-size sedan, and you're probably not buying it to take it through twisty, windy, fun roads. On the highway, you've got plenty of power to accelerate and to pass without worrying about feeling sluggish. Again, another pitfall for a big car like this, and visibility is also surprisingly good. The rear headrests actually lay down to let you see out of the back more easily. Of course, while you're on a long highway drive, one of the most important things is seat comfort, and this car is actually very comfortable to sit in. 
as I said before, the cabin is vastly improved over the previous model, and even from a passenger's perspective, it's very nice to sit in. Chevrolet gave both the windshield and the rear window a very long sloping look, and that's partially due to the fact that they're trying to improve fuel economy with better aerodynamics. Of course, one of the downsides to having steeply angled glass like that is that you do get a lot of glare on sunny days, and material like this light brown right here does stand out, especially on the windshield where I do get a little bit of blocked vision because of that. It's not a huge complaint, but it could be a little bit better. Another way that Chevrolet is trying to save fuel is with the electric steering system. Of course, it's less taxing on the car overall, but one of the downsides to that is that at slower speeds, you really do feel like you're just steering something and then the car is figuring out where it's going rather than you actually turning the wheels. Now the six speed automatic transmission, which of course is the only option in this car, is generally very good. One of the only complaints we really do have about that is the fact that gear shifts in manual mode take place by dropping the gear shift lever down to the bottom M level and then there's this plus minus button here on the gear shift selection knob. It's not ergonomic and if you do want to extract extra power out of the engine, it doesn't feel very good to have to lean your elbow back and press up and down on the plus minus button. The truth is, people who buy cars from domestic automakers are often very loyal to the brands that they've bought with. It's not clear whether or not Chevrolet will be able to generate conquest sales over cars like the Taurus or the Charger from Dodge and Ford, but what is clear is that they've built a car with fresh, exciting styling that finally does compete with the other companies. It's also clear that they've built a car with surprisingly dynamic handling. That, compared with its 305 horsepower V6 engine that slots the car nicely into the middle of the market segment, means that Chevrolet probably has a very solid competitor coming into the market when it goes on sale this April. For more on this review and others like it, visit autoguide.com.